I didn't set my, my goals too high. Radio is filled with geeks and people just above circus clown. Take off your glasses. Really? It's not often anyone gets to tell Howard Stern what to do. And what will happen? I don't know. Usually, it's Stern giving the orders or asking the outrageous. Do you stand before him nude or like you wearing panties? But not this time. All right, you ready? They're very blue. Stern's eyes may be his best asset. At nearly six and a half feet, he's huge in height. Who else would admit to the size of their genitals being under two inches? His hair is certainly nothing to brag about. I know that my look is, is definitely out there. And his mouth? I have turned radio around and made it a great medium. Yet he hides those baby blues behind a pair of shades. How can you always wear the shades? I have a very big nose, and I'm very self-conscious about it. And I would get a nose job, but I'm afraid it'll screw up my voice or something. Thank you, doctor. Great advice. Hold it. Howard Stern, the man who redefined outrageous on the radio, self-conscious? Yep, has been all his life. My genetics are really bad. I, I've not been blessed with a lot. Millions of his fans would disagree. Stern is blessed. He's blessed with enough smarts to know what his audience wants, and what they want is for him to say the unthinkable, which he does. 14, you lost your virginity easily. Um, Don't be too it proud was, of yourself. It was a, no, I think it was a little later. There are times when I'm on the air, and it's 6 o'clock in the morning, and I just go, maybe I shouldn't talk about this. Maybe it's not right for my image. I go, wait a second. You don't have an image. You shouldn't have an image. <laughs> but you're not in the mood to have sex like on a Friday night after you work all day, right? Why not? <laughs> in return for his irreverence, Stern has a loyal following that includes more than 18 million listeners. Today, his radio show is number one in the country. This is The Howard Stern Show. May I see you topless? Would that be okay right now? I can't help it, though. It's, it's, it's a character flaw. The other flaw is his compulsion to reveal everything about his life including what goes on in his bedroom. I do, I, the other night, I'm, I'm laying in bed, right? People started to relate. When I'd have sex with my wife, I would talk about it in graphic detail. Your wife is probably a candidate for sainthood. Yes, I, I believe you're right. She is a saint. Would you be mad if we were married and I talked about our sex life on the air? Of course I would. You would? Of course. As she is, I have no doubt. It is an issue in our relationship that is overwhelming. There are times when we're in bed and in the middle of it, my wife will go, is this going to be on the radio tomorrow? Is this going to be on the radio? It kind of spoils the moment, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it really does. And I go, of course not. And then I go, and that's when I go, oh, this should be on the radio. Or on TV, which it is, or in two best-selling books, which it has been. <laughs> and now, it's coming to a theater near you. He was offensive. The movie Private Parts chronicles Howard's struggle for fame, fortune, and even love. It's a story about... Uh, a guy who was a loser with women, I, I wasn't attractive to women, and suddenly I meet this girl in college who is beautiful and, and she loves me, and I'm, I'm so flipped out by this. He's and talking he's about me. Allison, the same woman he's been married to for 19 years. They have three daughters. Here we go. Oh. Fans of Stearns will recognize his story in the movie, but it's what he doesn't include in the movie that may be truly revealing. I used to live in a monastery for a year and just, uh, you know, live with people who were monks. Are you kidding me? No, I used to live in a did room. Did they know what you did for a living? Yes, yeah. They, some of them were fans, but not many. <laughs> and um, it was a little square room they'd give you, and it was $100 a month. And also, I'd gotten into transcendental meditation, which I still do to this day. So also the meditators were in there, and the lights were out at 10 o'clock, and the, the meditators that lived there lived a monk's life. They would not have sex. You know, I only could have a cot, and the lights had to be out by 10 o'clock. And the silence was beautiful. What did you think about when the lights were out and the place was really really quiet? You really want to know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Am I going to regret asking? Uh, yeah, probably. You're, you're so proper. <laughs> I mean, you have your sweater nicely right. You, know, you look like you're right out of a country club, for God's sake. Uh, you're too good for me. Uh, <clears throat> I... Um, you're right. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. While he never did tell me what he was thinking when the lights were out, Howard did reveal his most current thoughts, which he claims are universal. I have many sexual thoughts about women. I am a heterosexual and I have many sexual thoughts. It consumes me. I hate to break the news to women out there, but it consumes every guy. Even these guys who you, th I mean, Henry Kissinger or whoever it is you think is not thinking about sex every 10 seconds. It is in my mind every 10 seconds. Let's make one thing clear. Howard Stern doesn't discriminate. He picks on everyone, you, you know including himself. Do. You were the geek in school. Yeah. 
Um, I'm the you, geek as an adult. Well, I, uh, you said it, not yeah, me. Right, well. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. I but there are many who say when it comes to his comments about women, he's way over the top. Give me a kiss before my wife shows up. Oh, oh we yeah. do this every year. Yeah. <laughs> every other guy, she jams her tongue. Yeah, well, let me see. Wow, oh, that's a cute outfit. Isn't that a cute outfit? <laughs> <laughs> Look at I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. You can't be possibly wearing underpants with that outfit, no, could you? No, I'm not. No. As much as you denigrate women during your radio program, some of your closest professional associates and personal associates are women. I don't think I denigrate women. I, I love women, I love working with women, and my best friends are women. Say something dirty to me. He even credits a certain segment of women for his success. People say, what will you be remembered for? It has to be the whole introduction of lesbianism to uh, America and really making it mainstream. Lesbianism equaled ratings. Everybody loves Girl Scout cookies. Well, Even a gift of Girl Scout cookies can get him started. I praise Girl Scouts always have because they raise future strippers and stuff oh, for me to have on the show. He may make a living taunting women, but behind the scenes he says he's grateful to them. The editor of his bestseller, Private Parts, is a woman. The TV producer, whom Stern credits for teaching him the ropes, is a woman. And the director of Private Parts, his first film, is Betty Thomas from Hill Street Blues. I'd walk up to Betty and I'd say, um, how would you handle this scene? And she'd go, I don't know. Figure out a way to do it and do it. Now, the reason I admired that so much is because men have such big egos. Men always have to have the answer in life. That women don't think that way. Your college tapes aren't bad. No, I and perhaps the most important woman in his public life is his radio sidekick, Robin Quivers. White people beat you up? <laughs> oh, man, how embarrassing. You are an embarrassment to your race. <laughs> Robin is as important to that show as I am. I know when I'm not on the air with her, I stink. I'm half a show. That's very generous of you to say. Uh, it's true. I know I need her on the air with me. His multiple successes have led him to his claim as king of all media, but not, he says, to a swollen ego. Thank you so much, Howard. I love you. I love you. I could be sitting at a book signing, signing for 25,000 people. And I swear to you, as I'm doing it, I go, oh my God, how am I, how am I going to top this? I never feel that sense of satisfaction. Do you regret success. that you're not able to do that? Yes, I, I think there's a major personality flaw. I think it's almost healthy that I have a bad self-image. Uh, it keeps me level-headed, and it never makes me feel like I've accomplished everything.